and 17th episode of Silicon Zombies, where we bring you the best brains from the Bay to beyond. Peter, I love your dancers. You're looking beautiful over there, baby. I wasn't dancing. Well, we are so grateful to have you here at the gorgeous Park James. Quick uh, shout out for these guys. Thank you so much for having us. We're discussing the science of longevity today. That's right. We're unwinding what's behind living happier, living healthier, and living longer. We do have some wonderful sponsors in the house. Want to give a quick shout out to Primero Negocios. So if you're looking for digital marketing, these are the folks to talk to. We also have Arturo, who just came up here from Hermosillo, Mexico. So come up here real quick, and we're going we're gonna to have you share a little bit about Nicodex. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, we've been sponsoring the Silicon Zombies podcast for more than a year now. And we recently started working with a new company called Boardwalk Tech. Nick knows them very well. And what we do is we help companies to grow their software development teams using top talent in Mexico. So we help them to get connected to really high skilled developers, designers, UX, whatever your position that you want to uh, try to hire in Mexico, we can do it for you. So we are really happy to be here also in another so episode here. A quick shout out to Arturo who just finished uh, a program at Stanford with the Latino Business Action Network. So super excited to have Jim, Beth, and Jim today. And thank you so much for being here. And let's kick things off. Maybe we could start with... Uh, let's start... Oh, yeah, sorry. yeah. Just go ahead there, Human. Let's start with Jim. Jim Dickey. Human, tell, who are you, Jim, and what is human longevity? Thank you, first of all, for having us here and sponsoring this. We really appreciate it. My name is Jim Dickey. I'm the chief commercial officer for a company called Human Longevity. And Human Longevity was started 10 years ago by Dr. Craig Ventner, who is the brilliant scientist who decoded the human genome in the year 2000. And, you know, during that time, during the Human uh, Genome Project, the idea was that someday we were going to have this personalized, preventative, predictive medicine down to your last gene. Well, he made that a reality here. Um, in the first two years of business, he raised a half a billion dollars in investments from uh, Illumina, GE, and some very uh, prominent private investors. And then in late 15, launched a research project down in La Jolla. This all started in La Jolla. And we had about 6,000 people come through here the first... Uh, five and a half, six years to really fine tune this platform. And then over the last three years, we've commercialized it in a program called 100 Plus by Human Longevity. And the idea of what we're trying to do and what we are doing and affecting is we're looking for early stage cancers, prediabetes, cardiovascular issues, aneurysms in your brain, all the genetic predisposition to disease states that you may have and try to keep ahead of them before they express themselves. And once they start, try to keep them from getting any further. <clears throat> The way we do that as a, as a member, once you join, is you come in, you fast 10 hours a night before, there's a couple people in the room, maybe you have done this or maybe you haven't, right? And then we move you into a beautiful suite. We now have a, a beautiful facility in South San Francisco as well, which opened up about a year and a half ago on Gateway Boulevard. So you come in, you change some sweats, and then we take about 15 to 20 vials of blood. We feed you a nice breakfast since you haven't been eaten, and then you're going to spend about six hours there going through all these mod imaging modalities and tests, whole body MRI from head to toe. The MRI machines that we have are all what they call three Tesla magnet machines. They're the top of the top of the line GE or Siemens machines. CT scan of your heart, bone DEXA, sonogram, echocardiogram, all the different Im Im imaging modalities. You go wear with some wearables. But we're also going to then do a whole genome sequencing of you, and I'm talking about all six billion base pairs. Not like a 23 in the year, it's like, oh boy, I'm from Ireland. Now this is real science, folks, right? So then what they do, now that's just started, that's 150 gigabytes of data of, of representation of who you are. Now they just start. They apply AI, machine learning, bioinformatics, all this analysis and learning that they have achieved over the last 10 years in R&D to truly create probably one of the most comprehensive 360 degrees views of you that's ever been created on Earth, from which to now truly practice healthcare. You get a dedicated doctor throughout the year to follow your care. If there's any issues that we find, right, we're going to be able to get you to the best specialist in the area through referrals. We have a formal partnership with Massachusetts General Hospital out of Boston, which is we have access to over 2,500 of the most incredible minds in medicine on your behalf if we need to. Um, at least on a quarterly basis, you're going to have a review. 
uh, whether there's more blood work or whatever, and if you have issues during the week, you can contact the clinic and um, have your doctor work with you. We'll also work with your existing doctor for the interpretation and translational aspect of this data because most doctors, they haven't been trained to do it. doesn't mean they're not good, obviously, but they just don't know how to understand it. We'll help them. So that's just a, a brief overview of what we do because um, I know there's some time constraints here. And, and So go ahead. Yeah, so and these guys are located in South San Francisco, so they're local. Um, and do you just give tours of your facility even if uh, people just want to check it out? Absolutely. Very good um, point. Anytime you want, you know, you can speak with me or anybody on my staff to, to get a debrief of what we do. We can do Zoom. Or if you would like, prior to making some decisions, we have uh, Lauren Garfield here who is the head of our client services and will be able to set up a, a tour to come on in, maybe meet some of the doctors, go through, see some of the equipment, and see the beauty of the facility uh, to make a final decision, right? And if you have any medical questions, if a doctor isn't with a, with a client, grab them and see what's up. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jim. Um, Beth McDougall, who are you? And tell us what Jizen is. So I'm an internist by training. I've been practicing for 25 years in the Bay Area. And even before I went to medical school, I was interested in nutritional biochemistry and kind of a very holistic view of health, very interested in the mind-body relationship, psychoneuroimmunology. And so came out of residency and began kind of my career as a medical detective. So I started seeing progressively more and more complex cases over the years and would delve very deeply with people trying to get to the root causes of what was going on with them and looking at, you know, hidden infections, microbiome issues, like hormonal imbalances, neuro neurotransmitter imbalances, heavy metals, toxins, nutrient deficiencies, etc. And then I realized that, like, to, and I was helping people, so that was the good thing. And so my practice grew very rapidly. But, but I, at some point, realized, like, you know, to really unwind things and fully understand what's happening with the human body, I really needed to delve into physics and quantum physics and the biophysics of the body, because we are these complex multicellular beings. We have 37 trillion cells with millions of events happening every second in a coordinated manner. And science is not really explained at this point in a satisfactory way. Like, what's coordinating that? And then, when we look at the energetics of the body, the body has like two tenths of a, of a volt per cell, and we have 37 trillion cells, we have like seven trillion volts of electricity in the human body. And that energy is not coming from the food we're eating. And so where is it coming from? So absolutely, it is coming from our interaction with the field of energy that we exist within. And I think the medicine of the future is going to be looking at ways to enhance the coupling with the energy of the field. And basically, our physiology is dictated by these data sets that are unique to us that actually reside within the field. So what I have found is that health or disease is determined by how well we resonate with the field. And when I got so into that, I really started adopting an early adopter of these, these kind of biohacking technologies and lifestyle practices that either enhance, you know, that could enhance our interaction with the field. And I really got to looking at, like, let's let the field be our medicine. We're derived from the field, so let's let the field be our medicine. Let's start healing with electrons and photons and information signatures and sound and vibration and things like that, in addition to working with all of the, the nutrients that are native to the human body and balancing the hormones and, and working with the neurotransmitters, et cetera. So, so I've had a thriving practice for 25 years, and, and we started Jizen about a year ago, which where we have assembled, without a doubt, the largest array of health technologies for enhancing our interaction with the field and influencing the way we, we age. And so we'll talk a lot more. Yeah, about I was going to say, give us a little bit more overview of Jizen. Okay. 
So I moved my medical practice uh, over to Jizen, and so did a variety of other doctors. So we have, um, I'm an internist by training, and then we have an osteopath who specializes in regenerative medicine for the joints and, and structural issues. We have um, two other doctors that brought their long, lengthy practices over to Jizen just so they could take advantage of the ecosystem. And then we have uh, full intravenous medicine department. We have natural apothecary. We have full laboratory. We have biometric testing. We have a full neuroscience wing and an integrative bodywork department. And we have uh, red light and near infrared light beds and infrared ozone saunas and walk in cryotherapy units. We have adaptive training devices like VASPER. A lot of the research of VASPER was done down here in this area. And and lots been done with Navy SEALs and and um, people yeah, NFL too right? yeah NFL yeah. and we have you know six Vasper devices which are tra- training tools where you're you're training you're getting in the benefit of a two hour workout in twenty minutes um, where you have compression cuffs that have cryogenic cryo liquid going into them on the upper arms and the upper thighs and. So a lot of, as I was watching people age in my medical practice, I was noticing that people often will go down one of three paths. They will either develop a health issue like heart disease or cancer or diabetes or something, or they'll end up with cognitive decline, you know, whether it's just routine memory, you know, kind of age-related memory loss or a neurodegenerative process. Or they'll be fine in the brain and not have a health condition, but their structure will begin limiting them as they age. You know, maybe they they got a knee replacement, and now the other knee needs to be replaced, and then it's the hip, and then, oh, now they have spinal stenosis, and they're not able to be as active as they were before. And then that accelerates the aging. So we really started diving into what is causing the aging. You know, what, what is it? And I've come to feel that we age because our mitochondria age. So our mitochondria, the little energy factories in the cells that make the energy that, and I believe also kind of like plug us into this field of energy that we're derived from, they become dysfunctional with time. And then our cellular energy goes down and that leads to neurodegenerative processes and it leads to a slowdown in your metabolism which can then lead to insulin resistance and blood sugar dysregulation can start to begin to affect how do we utilize oxygen in the body. So, so these are the things that, that we are addressing at Jizen. We're going to um, talk about longevity towards the, the end of our conversation. But that's an overview of Jizen, and they are located in Mill Valley, everybody. <laughs> um, next up, we've got, we've got Jeff from ShiftWave. Raise your hands. Who tried the ShiftWave chair outside? Isn't it remarkable? You know, I, I have, uh, I have a, 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 a... Unfortunately, I was a little um, jet-lagged. I stayed up too late last night. And then I did 10 minutes in that chair. I feel like a million bucks. Help us understand a little bit more about this shift wave, Jeff. And who are you? <laughs> well, thank, you thank you very much. Well, you're, you're perfectly set up for a good shift wave experience if you walk in in that state. I know because I just flew in from New Orleans uh, to get here. So thank you very much for having me. My name is Dr. Jeffrey Rouse, and I am a board-certified psychiatrist who kind of never actually really fit in modern psychiatry because there's nothing cooler and more fascinating than the brain. But the way modern psychiatry works and gets taught is a bit soul-crushing just to try and distill it all down to neurotransmitters. And so my path took me here, took me there, actually took me to become the elected coroner for the city of New Orleans, where I was in charge of all death investigation there for some time. And then finally, I think my uh, purpose showed up, and that was the shift wave chair. So I'm just honored to be the chief medical officer of this new technology that's outside (laughs) that you can give a try. And what it does is it uses research-validated particular patterns of physical vibration to adjust and nudge the autonomic nervous system and the body into specific psychophysiological states. We're all a bunch of geeky scientists. It all comes from a psychophysiology lab where we have hooked people up to everything you can think of, EEGs, EKGs, EDA, all these different ways we can measure the electrical system of the body. While we put in different patterns, frequencies, amplitudes, different types of vibration, 
And lo and behold, we basically come up with a device that allows us to sort of dial in a psychophysiological state at will. So if we want to turn up your sympathetic nervous system to get you ready for that game, we can do that. More often, we're having people select programs that have the opposite effect. Turn up the parasympathetic nervous system, increase the heart rate variability, calm the body down after a long day. We've also got programs that can uh, basically start to mimic the physiological aspects of deep sleep where you start to open up the glymphatic system and actually start to wash your brain out from some of the accumulated toxins of the day. And we've also got programs that really are useful for muscle recovery and on and on and on. And so it's just been a joy to bring this technology from the lab into the world. And so now we've got it, of course, you know, you can buy it for home use, but we've actually got it with uh, NFL players, we've got it in other professional sports teams, wellness centers, hospitals. But what I find most passionate myself is that we've actually got a donation program where we bring it to Ukraine. So I've been there five times as we've donated our technology to mental health centers, military rehabilitation hospitals, and even some that are traveling on the front line with psychologists and chaplains. And to see it provide that reset that you talk about, that rapid change in psychophysiological state to persons who truly need it has been an honor and a joy. So I think I've finally found what wow. it is I want to That's do great. as a psychiatrist. That's awesome. Almost at age 50. So, so Jeff, help, help us understand a little bit more about the science. Is it the, yeah. the beta amylase? that's getting washed away from the neuron or help us better understand yeah so basically during deep sleep as many of you know deep sleep is super important deep sleep actually predicts uh predicts somewhat your risk of dementia it has a risk of it helps predict your sort of longevity and from a brain standpoint why because there's something very special that happens during deep sleep there's a piping system in our heads that is only open during deep sleep to wash out the cerebrospinal fluid, to sort of get rid of some of these proteins that accumulate during the day uh, and accumulate over our life that are important to flush out. It's the sewer of the brain. What ShiftWave does is we actually can induce that opening while you are awake somewhat akin to yoga nidra, if anyone's ever tried some of those practices, we've actually found a way to help increase the, increase the adoption of that. So you don't have to be sitting in a cave practicing yoga for decades to get to this state. We've found a way to help nudge people into that at, a, at the press of a button. So awesome. So come give it a try afterwards. <laughs> Uh, Jim, let's go back to you. Um, I want to hear a case study of a uh, time where somebody was like, okay, I'm going to check out human longevity. I'm going to sit down for the eight hours to get every single one of my cells measured. Thought they walked in perfectly healthy, and you found something. Well, that defines most of the folks who come here, right? They think, oh, you know, I've heard about this. I want to make sure that I'm extremely healthy and stay that way. I've earned all this wealth and I want to take care of myself for me and my family. So I've got case after case, but here's an example. We had a gentleman come through a couple years ago in San Diego, CEO type, you know, very, very wealthy, prominent man in San Diego, thought he was completely fine. And at the end of the six hours, we had to tell him we found a small tumor in his pancreas. Well, normally that's the kiss of death, folks, because you don't know you have that until you have pain. And usually once you have pain with that and you find out, you may as well just get your fares in order, right? So this is where the Mass General uh, Partnership comes into play. So we, um, within about a week, we had the chief of surgery from Mass General on the phone to do a consult. And he literally said, how the heck did you guys find something so small? Well, it's over $600 million of R&D behind a platform, that's how. About a week later, he got his private jet, he flew to Boston, they operated on him. And they took out one of the, one of the most smallest tumors they've ever taken off a of pancreas in medical series. It, it had just turned into stage one. And <laughs> yeah, he goes back to San Diego, gets all his aftercare. His whole entire family signed up for five years now. Uh-huh. Doctor Lillimo said that most likely, had he not come to you, he would have been dead in a couple of years. Right? Uh, there's one. Give right. us another one. So. <laughs> 
I've got them <laughs> list by this. Here's one that'll touch home simply because it'll be surprising. So I've just opened up a program because ultimately what we're trying to do here at Human Longevity is not just serve the wealthy, which is a wonderful thing to do, don't get me wrong, but we want to change how healthcare is done around the world, right? Yeah. We don't have health care in this country. We have sick care. We spend $3.7 trillion a year on sick care in this country. We wait till you get sick, and then we do a good job at treating it, but then a lot of times it's too late. That's 18% of our GDP. If you could start this in people's early 20s, we know that you could eradicate these diseases out of society early, and that's our goal, and we will make that happen. It's going to take time. So the reason I went down that road is recently I opened this up where... Uh, anybody 34 and under or above 18 can do this at a reduced rate to establish a nice baseline for, the, for your children for the rest of their lives. In doing so, just in the last couple of weeks ago, 22-year-old from the region here found a small tumor in his, in his brain. He's being taken care of. He's going to be fine. So I've heard this story. This 22-year-old, yeah. was uh, he's an athlete. Fit as can be. Didn't think there was anything wrong with him. You guys do a scan, and what did you find? Stage zero cancer in his brain? Zero to one. Wow. Yeah. And and how quickly and easily were they able to address that? Within, I mean, and that's the other key, right? So one of the things people always ask about, what about false positives, right? So we validate and validate and validate when we find things. And so I don't know exactly what the time frame was, but it was... It was very quick that we had him to the best person at Stanford, and they're, he's going to be fine. We found the same. We, we found a different one, unfortunately, but he's going to be okay. And a 33-year-old just two weeks, about a month ago, and it's the size of a baseball, right? But he's, it's, we got it before it got too late. He's going to be okay. We had times whenever people come in, and the real secret here is not doing this one and done. The real secret is doing this year over year because we know that you can walk out of here today and be fine. And if something starts in your body right now, there's a high probability in a year from now we're going to see it early and get it before it gets you. And we see this more and more. We had a gentleman come through, 55 CEO type, first time through, healthy as a horse, clean as a whistle, non-smoker, everything. And he came back 13 months later and we found the very, very beginnings of a tumor in his lower left lung. We had him Cedar Sinai within a week. Boom, he's going to be fine. And this isn't just about cancers, right? This is about prediabetes. This is about cardiovascular issues because we've got on staff cardiologists, internal medicine, OBGYN, integrative medicine, holistic, you name it, right? And they all work as a team, and we work with specialists if we need to get you there. And it's, it's about making sure that all the different modalities – tied together versus just doing one test here and one test there, right? And then, for example, just in, uh, we were talking about this, one of the benefits is, is as you come through, we add this test to the whole body MRI called a neuroquant test, which is me- measuring the hippocampus volume in your brain. And what that does is most of the neurodegenerative diseases, that's where you can start seeing them starting. So if you're if you have Alzheimer's in your family, for example, because when you come in, before you come in, you do a medical intake and all that. Um, or, and if we find the APOE gene when we do the genetics, because that's the one that's indicative of Alzheimer's, doing this scan for the um, Neuroquant every year, measuring the hippocampus volume as we age, it naturally shrinks at a normal rate. But we know where the numbers are that... As soon as they start to happen, the things are being triggered, so therefore we can get ahead of it, keep it from expressing itself further. And there's many things that you can do, especially with the, some of the things you're doing, right, yeah. that we incorporate into what we do to slow it down or, keep, or, or halt it long enough for the industry to find a cure for Alzheimer's, right? So this is just an example of some of the science. It's all highly data-driven, science-oriented Envisioned by the man who decoded the human genome, who is still the head of our scientific advisory board. I get the chance to see him, you know, every other month. Dr. Great. Craig Ventner. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Beth, you, um, you tackle very complex um, prognosis and diagnoses. Tell us a way that you approach something that other doctors weren't able to quite figure out. Give us some, some case studies of, of the work you've done. 
so recently, like maybe six months ago, I had a 64-year-old gentleman come in who was beginning to show signs of dementia. And he also had hesitancy with his movements. So he just wasn't moving very fluidly. He wasn't thinking well. He no longer could manage product projects around the house. He couldn't keep score in pickleball, nor could he play as well. I mean, things were really changing. And his wife, I had seen for years, she was concerned. So she brought him in because his doctor said, you have Lewy body dementia and early Parkinson's. And they said, what do you do for that? And he's like, there's nothing you can do. Just I suggest you get your affairs in order, like sign up with an elder care facility and, you know, just get ready basically to decline. And so we came in and I was like, well, what do you do for a living? And so he'd worked as a pipe fitter in the semiconductor industry as well and had been exposed to tremendous amounts of arsenic gas. And so we began doing some testing around heavy metals and began doing a protocol for pulling toxins out of the neurons and just cell membranes of your body. Like ni- large percentage, you know, upwards of 90% of the toxins we're exposed to are fat soluble. So heavy metals are fat soluble, pesticides, petroleum derivatives, etc. So anyway, you know, you can go on a juice cleanse or something. You're not touching that compartment of the body. It's not really going to address it. So what we do is intravenous protocol with advancing each IV, the dose of phospholipids that will kind of sweep those out of the membranes. And then we follow that with glutathione and folinic acid and B12 to kind of mop up what we release. And we balanced his hormones. We started working on his gut. And then we be, we got a brain map. So we did a 19-channel EEG brain map. And he started working with our neuroscientists, doing neural modulation, neural feedback. He started doing exercise with oxygen therapy. He has come so far. He is absolutely mentating better. He's now managing projects again. He's like... It's, it's a complete and total turnaround. Everyone in the whole clinic environment is aware that he's a transformed human. But Western medicine said, go get your affairs in order. There's nothing that can be done. But they're not digging to figure out why the guy was declining. Uh, so that's one example of so many. I had another guy come in. He would, I had another guy come in who had um, very severe high blood pressure. He was on four antihypertensive drugs that weren't working. He'd already had a stroke. He was afraid that he was about to die. He was afraid. He um, was having terrible side effects from the medications that he was on. He had been on every single class of antihypertensive medicine in the United States and some from outside of the U.S. All gave him terrible side effects. So what we did is we, again, did a 19-channel EEG brain map on him. His nervous system was locked in a fight or flight. His limbic system was just stuck on 24-7. Your technology would have been really good for him. But we were able, through neuromodulation, to kind of calm that down. I put him on a diet, helped him lose a quick like 25 pounds. He, um, I balanced his hormones. He was doing magnesium intravenously. And he was able to get off all but one of the medications, and we were able to get the level of that medication down, and he normalized his blood pressure. So things like that, when you have like access to this big ecosystem, you can accomplish these types of things. You know, speaking of magnesium, we know that by putting a little bit of salt water uh, or salt into your water, Mm -hmm. it'll actually help with uh, with nerve functionality. There's some simple things we can do, like seeing uh, sunlight early in the morning or, to your point, getting proper sleep. You three represent just the bleeding edge of technology for longevity and taking care of your body. What are some simple practices that we can do uh, uh, just from a day-to-day practice to really take care of our take care of our bodies so our bodies take care of us? Do you mind if I start? Please. Okay. Is this on still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just hold it right close to your mouth. So um, I so agree with the morning sunlight. There's so much good data that, that we respond to the wavelengths of light in the sun, almost like to like we do to nutrients. You know, each wavelength does different things in our bodies. And when you wake up in the morning and go outside, you're, the the light wavelengths that predominate in the sun at that time are like the red and the near infrared light waves. 
and it is so good for for activating the mitochondria. Those wavelengths of light actually can unblock blocked mitochondria. So there's a lot of toxins that can and nitric oxide that's produced in disease processes in the cell that can block mitochondria, and the sunlight will unblock that. It will also just improve energy production and. Pregnenolone is an adrenal hormone that's a precursor to cortisol. The first step in the production of pregnenolone from from cholesterol from our food happens in the mitochondria when the mitochondria is exposed to light. So that that that's what hooks us into the diurnal cycles of the of the earth where we wake up and we are, our light is exposed to our eyes that goes into our bodies and it affects the production of our hormones. That's why our hormones are on a circadian cycle. So yeah, and then mid-morning light is important for our bodies and reducing your exposure to the artificial light at night, so important for sleep, for example. Um, Go ahead and answer if you'd like to add to that, but after this, we're gonna open it up. So if you have any questions, uh, get them ready. Did you wanna, did you wanna, answer that as well sure I'll just follow up on what you're saying we are so evolutionarily adapted to a completely different environment than we find ourselves in I mean from the artificial light to the non-native EMF to the life that we lead, to the screens that we're in front of, to the demands in our time, to the isolation and loneliness epidemic that's going through our country, through the processed foods, to all these things that we are surrounded by that we are not attuned to. And that has effects in the body, in the mind, in the field, and in our consciousness. And so I think there's a growing understanding in our culture that something is fundamentally wrong with the way that we are living. And that's why you're seeing in the past decade mindfulness becoming on the cover of time. Breath work is not a weird esoteric practice. People are starting to get into it and talk about it in all different levels of society. It's fascinating to watch. And what I think is so important about all that from a daily practice standpoint is just to do that, is to have something. Mm -hmm. Zen meditation, yoga, breath work, dancing, dancing outside to get some grounding on the earth. It doesn't really matter what that practice is, but you have to have something. It's the antidote to this bizarre environment we find ourselves in. I think it's shift wave, but whatever it is... (laughs) I think it's shift wave, too. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Kimberly, you're my assistant, right? So Kimberly's... All right, you can ask the first question, and then she's going to have the mic to uh, go around. I'm going to be your mic runner, so yeah. if you have questions, let me know. Um, I don't know why I'm so close to everybody, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> I just love this because, um, first of all, I work at NASA with my husband. We don't work together, but we're together. Uh, we work at NASA in Mountain View, and one of the cool things about what the three of you have been saying, and I've actually met some people at the Human Longevity, and I already told them, sign me up. I want to go right now and get my little assessment done so I can live. Um, one of the things that's really cool is we look out for astronauts in space, which always helps us understand how to live better here on Earth. And some of these medical uh, people that we go to see for checkups and whatnot, um, they never help you with the resor- the reason why you have an illness. They're quick to give you a drug or tell you, oh my God, you're this, 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 so let me give you a ton of meds you have to take instead of fixing what the heck is broken to begin with. And I'm like, where in the system can we infiltrate that part, education? They don't teach the doctors today nutrition. I'm trying to eat my way to health. I'm not sure if I'm doing a good job of it. <laughs> but one of the things I would like to ask before I start helping other people ask y'all questions is are you guys in... I mean, you know, like with us, we try to put NASA in schools so people know there's cool things to think about with STEM. We should be going to the Department of Education. I'm just going to throw it out there if this is live. We don't need educators at NASA. We need to work with the system that puts the laws in the books and the kids get in their curriculum, right? Are you guys working that way with the medical institutions and the schools of 
you know, where you get your degrees, are you guys helping those people craft the right messages at the get go so that the future doctors of America will help our future become a future? Because that's really needed. I think we need to start there. So I love the question because ultimately, like I said, we are Craig's mission when he started this is to make this available to everybody in the world and make sure that this is how healthcare is done. Right now, we have to continue to build the business and improve the data. We need more and more data, mm-hmm. right? Because we're data driven. But in that, we have relations with a lot of different organizations that we we've educated, in including. You know, we're going to put 10 of these around the country, for example, in the next uh, four to five years, right? Maybe five, six to seven, because it, it takes time to put these in place. Probably the next one will be in Boston between MIT and Harvard. And like I said, we're very close to Mass General. We've talked to them about, and they've talked to us about, putting a residency program for Harvard medical students to come through here to learn how to practice medicine this way, right? So how do you change the mindset of a whole entire industry, mm-hmm. you start at the core. And if we could start training doctors and putting this into their curriculum, into their training, now they know how to practice medicine this way. Because the funny enough, the biggest objection I get when I talk to potential clients is my doctor says I shouldn't be looking at things. I shouldn't be <clears throat> looking for something if there's no symptom. Well, mm-hmm. duh, I mean, that's exactly the problem. It's upside down, right? Mm-hmm. Right? But that doesn't mean that doctor is bad. Like I said, it just means they've been trained that way and they're so ingrained. And you have to change that mindset. Yeah. And the only way to change it is to change it in the medical schools, in the Department mm-hmm. of, of, of Health, mm-hmm. all these different things. Eventually, I'm, we're going to have to go before all the geniuses in Congress <laughs> and <laughs> present data in such a way that hopefully it'll be so compelling they won't have a choice but to put this in Medicare and force the payers to pay this. And then we can get this into people's early 20s, right? Um, We're doing some things with another foreign government or a foreign country right now that are, that are going to be amazing as it, as it evolves over the next two to three years where they could literally open this up to nine million other citizens. All right, let's get the next question. Actually, we have a question on okay, online. Here we go. <laughs> We try to involve our online users sure. as well. Um, well, there's 15,000 of you, so thank you for <laughs> tuning in. Right. Um, so one of our listeners, Jacob Dietz, asked um, where – oh, my God, I just had it. Um, I'm not sure how to phrase this question, but I'm fascinated with the evolutionary path of mitochondria. I'd love to hear more about the lessons Beth has learned from studying these, quote-unquote, ancient immigrants. And he linked the article. <laughs> That's a, it is a great question because it's uh, mitochondria have their own DNA that is very akin to bacterial DNA. It's not double stranded uh, helical back, uh, DNA like ours. So it's thought that at one point in our evolution, mitochondria entered into our cell and then became symbiotic with us. And we started relying on the mitochondria for energy production. But because they are derived from bacteria, they're very vulnerable to antibiotics and things like that that we're exposed to. So if you have an antibiotic that has an intracellular penetration, it's not good for your mitochondria. And unfortunately, the mitochondria are vulnerable to damage from, you know, these toxins that I was referring to and certain pathogens. But one of the most important things that we can do that we have the power to change is what we eat because one of the most damaging things to mitochondria are omega-6 seed oils in the human diet right now. So as you know, the seed oils are just inexpensive and so they've replaced butter and things like that in the human diet. And so canola oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil have, have been introduced into all of the packaged and prepared foods and salad dressings and sauces and things like that. And they are stored in our cell membranes and in the mitochondrial membranes. And they are very much affecting the mitochondrial health and their ability to produce energy. So one thing you can do is just be fastidious about not including seed oils in your diet. It takes like years to deplete the seed oils from your cell membranes. So I I just 
urge you to start now. And the most, the more of us that can say in a restaurant, like, what kind of oil did you make that salad dressing with? Or what, you know, what's in the sauce? And like, if more of us start asking, then it's going to become more well known, you know, that, yeah, that pesto had some olive oil, but it's also safflower oil and shouldn't eat that. Great. Thank you. Mm-hmm. It's on. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, now we're in business. So, I'm obviously not a doctor or a rocket scientist. So they didn't invite me here for my intelligence level. So I have the most important question, though, for all of you. Precisely how much ice cream and cookies can I eat? (laughs) And still live to 90. I don't need 100, just 90. (laughs) Are the cookies made with butter, or are they made with... Well, <laughs> hopefully naturally. Yeah. Not so bad. <laughs> you guys have an answer for that? Like, how much, how much junk food can we eat and get away with? And what junk food do you recommend we can kind of, you know, be still healthy and still consume? Well, it depends on you. It depends on your age. It depends on, uh, like, if you're a woman, are you pre-menopause? Are you in menopause? Are you a marathon runner? Are you a sedentary office worker? Are you nursing a baby? Are you like, you know, all these factors. Like there's no one diet that's right for everyone. And there's no one diet that's right for you throughout your entire life. It changes. And so data is critical because like we do very extensive blood labs on people. And we look at, let's say, hemoglobin A1C, which is a marker of how well your blood sugar has been controlled over the previous six weeks. And then we do insulin and glucose and your and lipids and you know inflammatory markers and all of that and if you start seeing a climb in your insulin or your hemoglobin a1c or your lipids or your inflammation then you got to back the carbohydrates way down so what worked for you before may not work always but you can eat some carbs and it's what we used to kind of blame the whole obesity epidemic on on the carbs and now we're realizing it's the seed oils more even more importantly in terms of the human diet because when you diminish energy production in the mitochondria you slow down the metabolism and it's creating like embedding all of these omega-6 oils in your cell membranes is creating the insulin resistance and the leptin resistance and all of that was that a, yeah seed oil everyone that's the key no more seed oil yeah yes uh, since this uh, panel is on longevity, if you can only take one supplement for longevity, what would it be? <laughs> is that NMN or D3, whatever? Yeah. And if it's not one, give us two or three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll tell you my favorite supplement in the world, and I will just say I'm part of the company because I am so passionate about it. But um, I'm very, I'm a huge fan of my product, Mana, which contains shilajit. Are you guys familiar with shilajit? Shilajit is a resin that seeps out of the ground in a narrow chasm of the Himalayas at certain altitudes during certain times of the year. And it contains very high concentration of, of fulvic acid and humic acid, and those, that supplies the minerals in their most bioavailable form. So we're, our, our soils are very minerally deficient nowadays. And minerals are so important for that electrical charge I was mentioning on the cell membranes and our kind of that, that 7 trillion volts of electricity. They're, that they're a part of that. So this supplies you know, kind of the, uh, the fuel for your electrical nature of your body. And it's just got great research. Because right, the shilji has been in the top of the pharmacopoeia for Ayurvedic medicine and Chinese medicine for centuries. And it's been noted that, you know, people that use it are, they, they live longer, they're more virile, they're stronger, they age slower, they have, like, better memories. And so now in the modern day, there's a lot of research being done on shilaji to, to, to figure out why that is. And people are doing phenomenal research, and it, it enhances collagen production in the skin and... Re, you know, even has been shown to reduce the, 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 the clumping of the proteins that we see with Alzheimer's and even de-aggregate 
them once they have already started to clump. <laughs> so it's quite interesting. And um, my other product, I think, would be a, a precursor to NAD as an energy catalyst. I would say um, niacinamide is a more economical way of going about supplying mm -hmm. the raw stuff from which you make NAD. Um, before we get another question, who has who has an? Oh, oh go ahead, because I had a question for you. But after you're done, I'm going to add to that as well. I'm going to go old school in terms of the uh, the supplements. Okay, we again, as I said before, live in an environment that is completely different from that which we are evolved, and the and that shows up in the rates of vitamin D deficiency are tremendous uh, in the developed world. And that has effects in the mitochondria, in the body, and certainly in the brain, and the risk for, for mental illness as well. Uh, susceptibility to infection, I could go on and on and on. Yeah. And so getting the right amount of solar exposure is incredibly important for maintaining natural vitamin D levels. In fact, there are nine meta-analyses that show that sunlight exposure over time in your life is actually a longevity factor. Yeah. We seem to think it's only about getting skin cancer, and that's a smaller separate issue, but we are designed to be in the sun. And so I would urge you to work with your doctor to check your vitamin D levels, and if they are low, optimize your solar exposure. And if that's not possible for you, given your life and the, the way it is, consider vitamin D supplementation. Um, Jeff, let's stick with you for a quick second. Um, give us an overview of some of the ailments that uh, Shift Wave Chair has addressed. And if I could lead you maybe with the uh, NFL or with uh, Ukraine or something along those lines. Okay. <laughs> Left turn. Uh, yeah. uh, so we're, we're a young company, and we're like the, the dog that caught the bumper of the car. It's just been a, hell, a heck of a ride. We've got to deal with the, the NFL Players Association, and we've got some shift wave chairs that are being used by some really high-name NFL players right now. And uh, we've had a couple of instances where it's halved the amount of injury time that their trainers thought they would be out. They were supposed to be out for six. Is Aaron Rodgers on? And they were, and they were back in two. Uh, but but the, uh, the, the ailment or the situation that really speaks to my heart is our work in Ukraine. Um, we were there within six weeks of the uh, full-scale invasion, uh, kind of just going rogue, bringing the chairs to see if we could be of help. I'm a Norlinian, as I mentioned before. I know what it's like to have your city like completely destroyed by uh, Hurricane Katrina or disaster and evacuated all. So when we showed up with these bizarre chairs at a shelter in Poland uh, for the mothers and children who are pouring out of the country, just sitting in this old uh, Tesco supermarket, what are you going to do as a psychiatrist? You can't talk to them. You're not going to give them medication. But we had this chair. And luckily, the word massage somehow translates into Ukrainian. And so once we had that one person try the chair, it was on. It was gangbusters. We were there for like eight straight hours putting mothers, putting children through this chair to, to just help them reset for the first time after they were able to evacuate so that they could calm down for a moment and make that decision. Do they get on the bus to go to Germany? Do they get on the bus to eventually go to Italy? So where are their children? Figure out what the next stage is of their life. And so one particular moment was uh, of great import to me. You know, this mom, she comes and she tries it. She finally relaxes. You can see these faces just melt, and you can see their bodies finally get untense. And she sprints away from the chair. I'm like, oh my God, did we hurt her? What's yeah. up? And she then runs back with this child who was, I would say, four years old, clearly developmentally uh, challenged. Uh, there were some genetic things going on with this child. And she put this kid in the chair, and she just, she told him, she turned it on herself, and she just sat there patting him while the shift wave chair was readjusting his nervous system, and I'll never forget it. It was, it was, a, the, fir it, it was the first moment of peace they were able to have in, in the obviously horrible situation. Amazing. Uh, before we get to the next, we have room, time for one or two more questions. Uh, before we get to the next question, you mentioned a supplement. Can you spell that supplement, your supplement that you, like, what's it called? Yeah. Mana, M-A-N-N-A. Speaking to the mic. Oh. <laughs> mana, M-A-N-N-A. And is it mana.com? Yeah, manavitality.com. Okay, so now you can all. Because I saw everybody grab their phones and nobody knew what it was. And now, in my mind, I'm like, is it M-O-N-O? -O? Like, how do you spell this? 
Uh, do we have an- let's, let's talk about Vasper. Can, can we understand a little bit more about the Vasper technology at Jaizen? Yeah. Cool. Do you want to talk here, about it or do you want me here, to do? Here, let's, let's pass. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And tell everyone who you are, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Sebastian. I'm one of the co-founders here with Dr. Beth McDougall and uh, co-founder at Vasper Systems as well, as well. So Vasper is a technology that utilizes blood flow restriction and cooling to stimulate the body's production of anabolic hormones. So when we exercise at a high intensity, uh, we produce growth hormone, testosterone, IGF-1, and other anabolic hormones, and that's arguably the single most significant benefit of exercise. So VASPR is a means of initiating that benefit, but at a much lesser threshold than is normally involved. Yeah. So what's the experience like? Oh, what's the experience like? So the burn that you would normally feel towards the tail end of a workout, uh, you start to experience that usually in the first like three, four minutes without being out of breath, without being overheated. Um, and you're, you're basically rapidly concentrating lactic acid, creating the physiology of something closer to a two-hour workout in a low-impact 21-minute protocol. It looks like something from the future. Pretty, pretty wild. Yeah. yeah. All right, we have time for one more. All right, our final question. Let's end on a high note here. No pressure. <laughs> Good job. Thank you so much for the wonderful pressure. <laughs> Anyways, you were talking about the chair. I was just in Sedona a few days ago, and of course that's the center of all these alternative uh, things, right? And I was in this, what it looked like it was a red light bed, and they said it was methylene blue, which I've never heard anything about. All right. And then this morning I get an email, somebody was talking about methylene blue, and that that's something from 1890-something, and yet I never heard of it. And then when I started reading about it, especially all those common you know, testimonials on Amazon, uh, I was just really surprised what they were saying about it. So what's your opinion of it and why have n- most of us not heard about it so far? Mm-hmm. So methylene blue was originally developed as a textile dye for blue jeans. And then it was later found that there was... Uh, a component that could treat malaria and in methylene blue. And now it's kind of coming back around for different medical applications. So it has anti-infective properties, and then it's considered an energy catalyst that has some kind of complicated chemistry, but it can... It's, you, it's in every emergency department around the world because if someone has carbon monoxide poisoning, they are treated with methylene blue. So if your hemoglobin, which is the molecule that carries oxygen, is blocked by something like a toxin, like carbon monoxide, you can take methylene blue and it will carry oxygen for you. And it will do what oxygen is doing in your system, so to speak. But it has really good data on um, treating memory disorders, like you know, and neurodegenerative disorders. Great data on bladder infections <laughs> for some reason, and um, yeah, we do use it. We do use it, and it combines very well with red light because. So the methylene blue in I don't know if you guys want this, but in the mitochondria, there's a variety of enzymes. There's there's complex one, two, three, four. So the methylene blue works on complex one and on the final complex. And then red light works on the final complex. So they kind of synergize together to enhance mitochondrial function. Well, then and talking about stuff that so many people have, have nowadays is brain fog. Like that was one of the things mm-hmm. that a lot of people saying that it was working for them. Yeah. Like, you know, like literally in a day and being tired. Mm-hmm. So I thought, wow, these are like common things that everybody yeah. has. Again, how come we don't know more about this? Yeah, it you can know? be very good. I use it like if I ever feel like I'm about to come down with a virus or something, I will take a couple squirts of this liquid methylene blue and then I'll hop in our Novathor, which is a red light near infrared light bed. And oftentimes it just kicks it. Like it's, it's, it just kicks it. So it's such a great tool to have. I have it at home. I have it at work. And um, there are some contraindications, though. It doesn't mesh well with um, certain antidepressants. So if someone's on an SSRI drug, they should probably not take it. Um, 
But other than that, it is a really, really great tool. You know, speaking of toxins, at the Jison Institute, there's a, the paint on the wall actually pulls toxins out yeah. of the air. Can, can you speak to a little bit about that? Yeah, I think I think Sebastian can too. But it's like it it absorbs toxins. What's the base of it? It's like a, is it like a zeolite paint? You know, I forget the name of the tape of the paint, but it's yeah, supposed it's to like, pull what toxins is it called? out of the air. Smog, smog armor. Smog paint. armor. Yeah, and so it just it pulls toxins out of the environment. All right, listen, everyone. These uh, Jim, Jeff, Beth, are, they're going to be here for a bit, so you can talk to them one-on-one. I know when you talk about medical stuff, some people don't want to open up about their own personal medical history, so we've, they're generously going to stay for at least 30, 45 minutes. You can talk to them one-on-one. Nick, you want to close us out? Let's do it. All right. Thank you, everybody. What a marvelous evening. We learned a ton about longevity. Make sure to check with these folks after and tune in to Silicon Zombies for more of the best brains from the Bay to beyond. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great night. 